our final topic for today is emergency care. So our last topic for this course is emergency care. It's very important to know this because we have patients who is having cardiac arrest. How we will save this kind of patient? So we should know what are the things, considerations under emergency care. So let's begin. So emergency care includes basic life support. So most of you have already attended the basic life support seminar, so it will be easy for you to digest this, infor this following information. So what do you think is your wife? According to American Life uh, Association, life is your wife. Because the American Heart Association, they believe that they can help people by saving their lives. So basic life support, it is the foundation for saving lives after cardiac arrest. The basic emergency care techniques such as rescue breathing and cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR. So your basic life support includes your rescue breathing and cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So first, to understand fully ab the, about cardiac arrest, let us review what is the function of your heart. So what is the function of your heart? It pumps blood all over your body. Without the heart, your other body parts or body systems will not have blood supply. So you will die. So what is cardiac arrest? If you, if you will notice in the first picture that the heart should pump in this way. But during cardiac arrest, it started to pump slowly and then it will stop. So cardiac arrest, it is a condition wherein your heart malfunction and stops beating unexpectedly. So your healthy heart is on the left and your cardiac arrest heart is on the right. So you'll notice that there is no electricity. Your heart, for it to pump, it needs an electricity, but during cardiac arrest, electricity ceased. So we have two causes of cardiac arrest. We have the plumbing problems and we have the electrical problems. The, the plumbing problems occurs when the pipes that blood that pump blood to the from the heart are clogged. So maybe it is clogged because of the cholesterol, because of diabetes, and so on. But in electrical problems, the electrical conductivity of the heart stops. That's why the, the heart will not pump anymore. So general concepts of BLS. So we should always remember the three age, ages that we are treating and using our basic life support. First is the adult, okay? So the adult, it is from adolescence and older. How you will know that it is the adolescent? In male patient, there will be a chest and underarm hair. While in female, any breast development is a sign that the patient is an adolescent. Children, it is from one year of age to adolescent and infant less than one year of age. So what is CPR or cardiopulmonary recitation? It is a life-saving procedure for victims who has signs of cardiac arrest. Guys, you cannot do CPR for those patients who has pulse who has breathing, okay? It is only done for three categories or three, three qualifications. First, 
the patient is not responding. Second, the patient is not breathing. And last, the patient has no pulse. If this three is not present, you cannot do the CPR. So before we are following the sequence of A, B, C, okay, before, but now they change the regulation. Now we are we are following the C, A, B format, which is the compression, the airway, and the breathing, okay? Because they believe that compression will restore everything. If you will compress the patient, you will compress the heart, and when the heart pumps, the pump, the, the heart will deliver the blood supply needed by different type, different parts of the body. That's why they consider compression first. So what are the qualities of high quality or high quality CPR? First, you should start compression within 10 seconds of recognition of the cardiac arrest. So if you found someone who had cardiac arrest, immediately start the compression so there will be a higher, rate, higher chance that you will save the patient. Then push hard and push fast. Make sure that your shoulder is the one pushing the patient, not your back or any part of your body. Because in this way, you are giving force on pumping or doing the CPR. Compress not at the rate of 100 to 120 per minute. I'll repeat, you should compress at the rate of 100 to 120 per minute. So for adults, the depth of compression should be at least two inches. I'll repeat, for adults, you should compress at least two inches or five centimeters. For children, you should compress at least one third the depth of the chest. It should be about two inches or five centimeters. At least and about is a different thing, okay? At least means it should be a minimum of two inches. Well, about you should compressing at exactly two inches because it is children. Adult is bigger than children. So you should compress at about two inches. For infants, it is lesser. So it will be about one and one half inches or four centimeters. Allow complete chest recall. Don't just compress. Make sure that your uh, chest is recoiling. So com uh, after each compression, minimize interruptions. If there are many bystanders there in the work in the place, don't mind them. Just continue to compress so you can save the patient's lives. Then give effective breaths. So after compression, give two breaths. How you will know that you are giving effective breaths? By chest rise. Avoid excessive ventilation. Because if you're giving excessive ventilation, you are giving air to the abdomen. That will cause abdominal distension or inflation. So for us, Adult chain of survival, these are the sequence. First, you should recognize and activate the emergency response. Next, immediate high quality CPR. Then, rapid defibrillation. Then, basic and advanced emergency medical services. And, advanced life support. So, advanced life support, if this is usually done by the ICU staff. So in pediatric chains of survival, it is different. So if you'll notice, recognition of an activation of emergency response system will come first compared to the pedi pediatric chain of survival. 
So first, in pediatric chain of survival, there will be a prevention of arrest. You will start first CPR, then to call or activate the emergency response. Also, it is effect, uh, you, you need to do effective advanced life support, which is done by the uh, ICU staff and integrated post cardiac arrest care. So let's start with a step-by-step -step sequence of the adult basic life support. So first step, guys, is verify the scene. You should verify the scene. You should look left or right, up and down. You should make sure that yourself is safe before saving others. How you will save your how you will save others if yours, you yourself is not safe. So first you should verify the scene. If the scene is safe, proceed to the next step. Check for responsiveness. How you will check for responsiveness? Tap the shoulders, tap the patient's shoulder and say, hey, hey, are you okay? Hey, hey, are you okay? Next. Assess for breathing, how you will assess for breathing. You observe the rise and fall of the chest for not more than five, for not uh, more than 10 seconds. You count one up to 10. If the patient has no breathing or only gasping, you consider it as signs of sign of cardiac arrest. What do you mean by gasping or agonal gasp? It is an abnormal breathing which present in the first minute of cardiac arrest. If you notice someone who is breathing but it's hypoventilated, it's like it's like it's not a normal breathing, you consider that as no breathing at all. Next, you activate the emergency response system and ask someone to get an AED. Number five step. Check for pulse. So how you will check the pulse? For an adult patient, you should check the carotid pulse. How you will locate the carotid pulse? You locate the trachea and then you slide either left or right. You should be sliding near to you. So you should slide it two to three fingers using two to three fingers. And if you notice a groove, okay, a deep, a deep uh, part of the neck, that is where your carotid pulse is located. It is between the muscle and the trachea. So feel the carotid pulse for not less than five seconds, but not more than 10 seconds. Then if the patient has no breathing, no pulse and unconscious, you start high quality CPR. So for adult compression, the rate should be 100 to 120 beats per minute. High quality compressions, hand placement on the lower half of the sternum. So just below, uh, you draw a line on the uh, nipple of the patient. Just below the nipple, it is the lower half of the sternum. So you should start compressing on that part. It should be 30 compressions in 15 to 18 seconds. Compress at least two inches for adult. And of course, you should uh, allow complete chest recoil in each compression. You should also make sure that if you are doing compression, there will be a flat surface. Don't compress the patient if it's the, the patient is in a uh, soft surface. You should place the patient in a flat, hard surface so your compression will be effective. Yes, remember the importance of firm surface. Do not move the patient while on CPR. So you allow adequate chest recoil. So after you, you do compression, you give two breaths. So we have two ways of opening the airway. If your patient have no spinal cord injury, you can use the head tilt chin lift maneuver. 
So this is in the uh, upper side. Okay, you just hold with your uh, the lower the lower jaw of the patient while jaw thrust. We are only using this for those patient who is with spinal cord injury because you're not hyper extending the neck. So give two breaths, each breath over one second. You should make sure that there is a chest rise when you're giving breath, and you should resume the, the compression within 10 seconds. So during rescue breathing or uh, giving of breaths, we should use pocket mask, okay, to prevent ourselves from ha contracting infectious diseases. So I'll teach you how to hold this mask, how to properly use them, this mask. You should seal it properly so the air will not come out. So after five cycles, you should perform the CPR for five cycles or two minutes. I'll repeat, you should perform the the CPR for five cycles or two minutes. After that, you need to recheck the pulse. If the pulse is already present, don't do CPR. Do accordingly. So if the patient moves, okay, so place the patient into recovery position. So what is recovery position? How you will do recovery position? So please take a look on the picture shown <coughs> in your monitor. This is the recovery position. So you place other, you extend the, the other arm and then you place the other arms on the next to the face and then place the patient on the lateral position. So this is the algorithm or the steps how to do the adult cardiac arrest or BLS. So you need to do five cycles of CPR or two minutes. So if you are having two rescuers, so one rescuer came already so it's very helpful for you to do the CPR. So what are the steps? First, verify the scene. Next, rescuer one, they should check the responsiveness. The one who uh, discovered the cardiac arrest, he will be the rescuer one. Hey, hey, are you okay? Hey, hey, are you okay? Tapping by tapping the shoulder. Rescuer one, he will assess for breathing also. Check for breathing, the rise, observe for the rise and fall of the chest for not, ten, not more than 10 seconds. Then the rescuer two will come. He will be the one uh, who'll activate the emergency response system and get the AED. Then after that, the rescuer one position and check the pulse by using the carotid pulse. If there's no pulse and no breathing, rescuer one will start the high quality CPR by using the 30 is to two, 30 compression and two ventilation or breathing, rescue breathing. Then the rescuer two will apply the AED. He will be the one who, who get the AED and he will be the one who will apply the AED. So how to put the AED? It's very easy, guys. How to put an AED? You should open the case of the AED, turn on the AED, and follow the prompt. Okay, follow the voice. So you, uh, it's very easy to follow the voice because it will tell you everything. So... Then apply the adult electrode pads. So you'll be telling like this. Attach the connecting cables to the AED. Clear airway from the person. 
make sure no one is touching the patient. Let the AED check the person's heart rhythm. Make sure everyone is clear from the person. Then, if the all are clear, then the, uh, the second rescuer will tell, I will shock the patient. I am clear. You are clear. Everyone is clear. So shock delivered. So after that, the AED will tell you what to do. So that AED will usually tell you to continue CPR. Then, so after the, the AED, okay, you will do the CPR. Then the other one will do the rescue breathing instead of uh, instead of pocket mask now you will be using the ambu bag so how you will use the ambu bag you will use the technique of easy clamp easy clamp technique like in the picture so you should seal it properly so that the air will not escape then after that, you should repeat the steps until five cycles and check for the pulse. So at that time, you should exchange, uh, you will exchange the role. So the second rescuer, the first rescuer will be the second rescuer and the second rescuer will be the first rescuer. Yes. So that is adult BLS. So you will understand it fully when we will do it on Friday. Next is infant BLS, one rescuer. So first you should verify the scene. So the scene is safe. Check for the responsiveness. How you will check for the responsiveness of the baby? You should tap the sole of the foot, not the shoulder. Then check for breathing, check for the rise and fall of the chest, and activate emergency response system. So there is a difference between witness and unwitness arrest. If there will be a witness arrest, if you oh, if you saw it with in your eyes, okay, you should activate emergency response immediately. But if you if you did not witness the arrest, you should uh, start first uh, one cycle of CPR before calling for or activating the emergency response system. After that, you check for the pulse. So you check at least five seconds, not more than 10 seconds. Then infant brachial pulse midway between elbow and shoulder so you will not check the car carotid pulse of the patient but the brachial pulse so the brachial pulse is located in the midway or between the elbow and the shoulder so in the middle you should always check on the side near to you so infant compression you should do high quality compression. You should place the two fingers in the center of the chest, just below the nipple line. Then 30 compressions for one rescuer or about 100 to 120 compression, rate of 100 to 120 compression per minute. Then you should compress about 1.5 inches or four centimeters and of course allow full chest recoil in giving breaths also you can use the head tilt chin lift maneuver or jaw thrust if the patient is having spinal cord injury so in the infant breaths okay you should use uh, it differs from the head tilt chin lift maneuver from the adult because in infant breaths we are using a neutral or sniffing position 
So how you will place the patient in a neutral position? Okay, you just imagine that you are placing a towel or a pillow under the patient's head. Okay, so this is the neutral position. You don't need to hyperextend the neck. At this way, the patient's airway is more open than extending. So for one rescuer, the ratio is 30 is to 2. It should be 2 minutes also and 5 cycles. Then check for the rhythm after 5 cycles. Check for the pulse on the brachial area. If the patient moves, place the patient into uh, the baby into recovery position. So there are two types of recovery position. Recovery position that you can put on the your shoulder and the other uh, recovery position is like this on the right side. So the patient secretion will be draining. So if you have another rescuer, okay, what are the steps? First, verify the scene. The scene is safe. Then check for responsiveness. Hey, hey, are you okay? Hey, hey, are you okay? Then the rescuer one, the the first rescuer, the one who discovered the cardiac arrest, you should assess for breathing for not more than 10 seconds. Then he will activate the emergency response system. Then position and check the pulse by using the brachial pulse, still the, rescue, the first rescuer. Then if there's no pulse and no breathing, the first rescuer will initiate high quality CPR. With 30 is to 2 ratio, the ratio is 30 is to 2, and it will be high quality. Then, rescuer 2 will apply rescuer 2 will apply the AED. Okay, and then follow the prompt. So open the AED and follow the prompt. So the first rescuer is the chest compression. You will do the chest compression and the other second rescuer will do the rescue breathing. So at this time that you have two rescuer, the ratio will be changed. It will be 15 is the two ratio. So 15 compression using two thumb encircling technique and compression using the ambu bag. So this is the ambu bag, the easy clamp technique. The two thumb encircling technique you should use for only only if you have two rescuers. The ratio for two rescuer infant BLS, it should be 15 is to 2. So you should always check after five cycles or two minutes. And if the patient will move or there are signs of movement, so you should place the patient into recovery position. So next, we finish the BLS now. What is rescue breathing? Rescue breathing, it is used if the patient has pulse but without breathing, okay? So you already revived the patient, the patient had already pulsed, but still the patient is not breathing. So the technique that you need to use is called rescue breathing. So for an adult, you, you need to give one breath every five to six seconds or 10 to 12 breaths per minute. For an infant or children, you should give one breath every three to five seconds or it should be 12 to 20 breaths per minute. The five to six seconds and the three to five second, uh, seconds in infant, this is the 
interval of the breathing. So this is the rescue breathing. So I'll teach you how to do also rescue breathing. It's included in your uh, demo. So let's go to the first aid, choking. What is choking? Choking, it is the obstruction of foreign bodies in the airway. So what are the universal signs of choking? Clutching of the neck. What is your first aid with this choking? If your patient is conscious, an adult conscious patient, okay, you, you can do Heimlich maneuver. Okay, any patient, adult or child who is conscious or responsive, you can do Heimlich maneuver or abdominal thrust. If your patient is pregnant and obese, you can do chest thrust. So how you are doing the Heimlich maneuver? You place your hand, okay? You locate your belly button and then your uh, your belly button and your uh, chest bone. Then at the middle of belly button and chest bone, uh, make a fist and then push it upward. So in this way, you're making abdominal thrust. But, if you're a patient, after that, you made the patient, the patient became unconscious. Now you can start the CPR. So if your patient is an infant, a choking infant, the infant is a responsive infant or conscious infant, okay, you will do the five back blows and five chest thrust. So please is locate your pay, uh Place your patient, okay, into proning position and then give five, five back blows. Then, again, you place in a supine position, give five chest thrust. It should be alternating. If your patient became unconscious, again, you should start CPR. So another first aid uh, problem that we'll encounter is hemorrhage. So we have a patient who is having hemorrhage. Hemorrhage is severe uncontrolled bleeding. So how you will uh, give an emergency care? So first, you need to remove any clothing or debris on the wound. You should stop the bleeding. Okay? Help the injured person to lie down. Don't remove the gauze or any bandage because it will increase the bleeding. So you can use tourniquet, okay, or like a big rubber okay, that can uh, put pressure on the bleeding site and it will uh, stop the bleeding. Then immobilize the injured body part as much as possible. In all bleeding, you should put pressure to prevent uh, or to stop the bleeding. That's the uh, guidelines. Fainting. Fainting is a sudden loss of consciousness from an inadequate blood supply to the brain. So what is your emergency care? First, have the person sit or lie down before fainting occurs. Then, if sitting, the person bends forward and places the head between the knees. So it's like this. Or you can place the 
arms in two pillows or higher than the heart. You should loosen the uh, tight clothing. Keep the person lying down if fainting has occurred and raise the legs. Do not let the person get up until symptoms have subsided for about five minutes. So this should be done. Shock. So if we encounter patient with shock, this is also an emergency situation. So this is results when the organs and tissues of the body do not receive enough oxygen containing blood. So we have different types of We have different types. We have different types of shock. We have the cardiogenic, C stands for cardiogenic shock. H is for hypovolemic shock. A is for anaphylactic shock, N is for neurogenic shock, and S is for septic shock. So there are these are types of shock. Okay. So what they are having in common, you will be having a decreased blood pressure that will uh, be the cause of death. So what you need to do, lay the person down and elevate the legs. You should place the legs upper than the heart. Or if you don't have any pillow, you should get a uh, you should get a, a box or any material that can elevate your legs. Then keep the person still and don't move him or her until necessary. Begin CPR if the person shows no signs of life. Loosen the tight clothing. Don't let the person eat or drink anything. If you suspect that the person is having an allergic reaction you and you have a access to an epinephrine auto-injector, so use it accordingly. So that is called EpiPen. If the patient had allergies or septic shock, you should use the EpiPen. If the person vomits or begin bleeding from the mouth, turn him or her onto a side to prevent choking. Next, stroke. Stroke occurs when the brain is suddenly deprived of its blood supply. So what are your emergency care? You should always remember the acronym FAST. FAST face is uneven. A, arm is weak. S is speech. Speech is strange or slurred. And T is for your time. So the first three acronym, face, arms, and speech. Okay, these are the signs of stroke. Okay, this is the indication that the patient is having stroke. So T, this is your, uh, this is your response. You should call immediately the emergency or the ambulance. So, so to prevent the complication of stroke. Seizure. It's very important to manage seizure. Seizure, it is a violent and sudden contractions of tremors of the muscle groups. So what you need to do, stay calm. Okay, don't panic. Then loosen anything around the person's neck like clothing, ties, jewelry that can impede breathing. Do not restrain the person. It may result to injury. Do not put anything into the person's mouth. Don't believe to the... Uh, so the practice of others that they are putting spoon on the mouth, it's not true, okay? You can, uh, it's not true because it can block the airway of the patient. Clear the area around the person and remove any objects that can harm the person. The important or the priority that you need to do for the patient is protect the head of the patient to, pre to prevent injury. Okay. So imagine the patient is having a generalized tremors or violent tremors. So make sure that you protect the head of the patient. You can get a soft 
uh, a pillow or a blanket to make sure that uh, that the head is being protected. And position the patient after the, the seizure, position the patient into left or lateral position so the secretions will drain. So that it will prevent aspiration. Seizure usually lasts uh, longer than five minutes. Okay, another seizure begins soon after the first one ends. Next, burns. Okay, so we have different uh, degrees of burn. What are burn, burn, uh, burns? Burns are injuries to the skin and possibly the underlying structures as a result of exposure to heat, radiation, and electric shock or chemicals. So we have first degree burn, we have the second degree burn, and we have the third degree burn. If we're talking about first degree burn, the one affected is only your epidermis. Second degree, the epidermis and the dermis. And the third degree burn, it includes your subcutaneous tissue. And it is the most uh, serious uh, uh, type of burns. So if you have a major burns, protect the burned person from further harm. If you can do so safely, make sure that the person you're helping is not in contact with the source of burn. For example, if you have electric burns, make sure that you remove the person from the source of the electric burn before you do anything because uh, you will be also shocked if you will not remove the person in the source of the electrical burns. Make certain that the person burn is breathing. Okay, remove jewelries, belts, and other restrictive items so the patient airway will be cleared. Then cover the area of the burn. Use a cool, moist bandage or clean cloth. Then don't immerse the large, severe burns in a water. Elevate the burn area so that there will be a good blood circulation and watch out for signs of shock. So if you have usually this cool the burn, cool the burn, hold the burn area under cool running water or apply a cool wet compress until the pain eases. Usually this is done to second degree burn. Apply lotion. Once a burn is completely cold, apply a lotion. Then bandage the burn. Cover the burn with a sterile gauze. Before bandaging, you should cover the burn with a sterile gauze bandage. If needed, take an over-the-counter pain reliever because it, with it is so painful. For epistaxis. Epistaxis, it is the bleeding okay, of your nose. So what is your emergency care? So you tell the patient to lean forward and then pinch the soft part of the nose until the bleeding will stop. Don't tell the patient to lean backwards and uh, do this position because what will happen, bleeding will not stop and you will inhale the blood. Heart attack, you will always follow or you will always remember Mona Lisa or Mona. So Mona Lisa for M for morphine, O for oxygen, and for nitroglycerin, and A for aspirin. For anaphylactic shock or anaphylaxis, anaphylaxis, it is a severe allergic reaction. One can die if there will be a severe allergic reaction because the most com most severe complication is difficulty of breathing. So what we need to have or what we need to give is called the epinephrine pen or the EpiPen. So this is the EpiPen. We will just put the EpiPen or inject the EpiPen on your thigh 
no need to remove anything the the clothing or or any clo clothes so you just inject it and it will be effective so at this point you will prevent anaphylaxis or severe allergic reaction so this ends my discussion about emergency care so the demonstration or practice demo of the BLS, I'll teach it on Friday. Please prepare for a quiz for of all the topics that I've discussed online. It, in, it includes geriatric care, adult care, pediatric care, emergency care. Thank you very much and have a good day.